everybody. Good morning. Good morning to you. Hello. Hello. Good to see you guys on this morning. Welcome to today's breakfast. So my name is Casey Star Long, and if you are watching, that means that you are here for today's breakfast. So what I try to do each and every day is share a word from the Lord. So I'm always here on Facebook Live um, at 10 a.m. And throughout this month, we are actually eating a proverb each and every day this month. So we're eating the word of God, and God is speaking to us through the book of Proverbs. And so we've been having a really great time. And our purpose for going through the book of Proverbs is really to gain wisdom. It is really to put ourselves at the table of God and for God to instruct us through his word. We know that his word is useful for rebuking. It's for, it's um, useful for teaching. It's useful for correcting. And it's useful for equipping us as men and women of God. And so God's word, I'm telling you to be successful in life um, and to, to have prosperity, to have peace, to have safety. We want to abide in the word of God. And so this has just been a very good meal eating with you guys throughout this month, um, through this month um, as we go through our Proverbs challenge. Well, you guys, I'm not going to delay. We're going to jump right in. We're on Proverbs chapter 20. And for those of you, if this is maybe your first time watching um, our Proverbs Proverbs challenge. I want to invite you. You haven't missed much. Well, we've gone through 19 other chapters, but there are more chapters. There's more content that God wants to speak to you about. And so I just believe um, that you're here at the right time. And so we're going to have a great session on today. Just a reminder, I want to encourage you to always visit our YouTube page. You can subscribe to our YouTube page. Um, I always post uh, the replays on YouTube. So if you ever miss one, maybe you missed um, some of the past Proverbs challenge uh, teachings, just go back and watch it um, at your convenience on the YouTube page and be sure to subscribe. All right. Okay. So let's go. So what I've been doing um, throughout this month is just pulling nuggets, just asking God, God, what do you want me to share? Um, when I go before your people. And so God has highlighted various different scriptures. And so I'm going to pull out the ones that he has highlighted, but I also want to encourage you in your own time today, maybe on your lunch break or before you go to bed, make sure you read through this chapter. Proverbs is a great book. Usually there are 31 days in a month. There are 31 chapters of Proverbs. So you can read one each and every day. I like to read them in different uh, versions of the Bible because I always pull out new thing. So today we're going to be going through the amplified version. And so the first nugget that God spoke to me about in reading this scripture, it comes from the first verse. All right. And so what it is, it says, look, being drunk is not wise. I think we know that. I think common sense tells us that being drunk is not wise, but I'm speaking to those who may be watching this video and um, you you enjoy a drink every now and again, or maybe drinking is something that it's an area where God is speaking to you and ministering to you about. I could probably do a teaching about um, whether or not Christians should drink. I'm not going to go there. Um, I will share my testimony that God did deliver me from alcohol seven years ago. So I haven't had a taste of alcohol since then. Um, and that really was an area of deliverance for me. Um, but I'll share my testimony at a later date. Some of you all have heard my testimony on this. But let's just go and see what the word of God says. All right. In Proverbs 20 and 1, it says, wine is a mocker, strong drink, a riotous brawler, and whoever is intoxicated by it is not wise. So it's just really important to make sure um, that if you are drinking, not getting to the point of intoxication, not getting into the point of drunkenness, um, we're going to find out later on through this Proverbs challenge that in Proverbs 31, uh, Solomon's mom is actually giving him instruction on what type of wife to choose. Um, but in that little, before you start getting into the stuff about the Proverbs 31 woman, she, she begins to speak to him and say, you know, that. Um, beer and wine is is not for kings. Beer and wine is not for kings. And so we'll talk a little bit about that um, as we go through this Proverbs challenge. But I always remember that um, because if that was a caution to a king, someone in authority and in leadership, it's just a reminder for, for us, I believe. So this scripture is just letting us know that, look, it's not wise to be drunk. 
All right. It's not wise to be drunk. And if you find out that you are drinking to get tipsy, you're, you're drinking to, to get faded, you're drinking to, you know, um, be released from your problems. Then I do believe that, you know, that that's an area of concern and that's something that you really want to bring before the Lord. Um, so when I was drinking, I wasn't drinking just, you know, some people say, I guess there's a scripture that talks about that wine settles the stomach. Um, I, I believe maybe back in biblical days, you know, people did um, have, take wine or, or alcohol, you know, to settle their stomachs. But nowadays people are not, you know, drinking wine because you have an uh, upset stomach. People are drinking wine because you want to feel good. You want to feel good. And so there's a there's a whole direction um, that we can go into teaching about that, um, which is really sorcery, that you're taking wine or drugs or alcohol to feel good. That's like a whole other thing. But we won't go there. We'll just stick with what's in Proverbs chapter 20. And it's letting us know that being drunk is not wise. And yes, Sister Soe says, thank God for deliverance. For real, for real. All right. Number two. The second point is. Brother or my sister, you better work. <laughs> One of the great things about going through the Proverbs challenge is that Solomon, he continues to remind us of some uh, very wise points. And he speaks about them in various different ways. So again, we're talking about the spirit of laziness. And y'all know that um, as we've gone through this Proverbs challenge, I've shared over and over different scriptures about the importance of making sure that we are not lazy. And I think sometimes when we're not careful, even as believers, we can get lazy. We can get really comfortable talking to God and asking him to do this and to do that. But I really believe that we are in a season right now where God is saying, you know what? Faith without works is dead. And James, it talks about that, you know, because of our faith, we put our feet into action. And I really believe that this is a season where God is saying, you know what, Casey, you know, you've prayed about this long enough. I've heard your prayers. You got some real nice seeds that you planted in the ground through prayer. But now it's time to work that for a season, I found myself just praying to God, God, please bless my my business or please bless the ministry. God, let it overflow. God expand it. And now I find myself in a season where God is saying, you know what? Okay. I've heard those prayers, but now here's time to implement the God given strategy that I'm giving you. And so I just want to ask you this question. What have you been praying about and what has God told you to do next? Because, um, you know, God, uh, he moves through us. He moves through people. He also moves supernaturally. But I just want you to just begin to ask God, you know, Lord, is it time for me to move? God, what are you what are you instructing my hands and my feet to do in this season? So there's a scripture. It says the lazy man does not plow when the winter planting season begins. So he begs at the next harvest because he has nothing to reap. So we don't want to be like that person that um, is praying when God is saying, look, now it's time to work. We don't want to be like that person where when it's really time to reap, we have nothing to reap. And instead we have our hands out asking, well, can you bless me? Can you sow into my ministry? Can you do this? Can you do that? We don't want to be like that. So again, so we're in this Proverbs challenge and we're just asking God, God, give me wisdom. God, give me wisdom. Is this time for me to move out? Is this time for, for me to start this class? Is this time for me to you know start this business? Is this time for me to start teaching this or doing that? We're just asking God for wisdom. We would really want to be like the sons of Issachar who were able to discern the times. We really want to be like that. Okay, we're moving right along. We're going to point number three. And this is a great um, reminder for us. It lets us know this is in Proverbs and it's sharing with us that we are an example for our children. Your children are looking at you, your grandchildren, they are watching you. Look, they may not say anything. They may seem really disinterested, but we are an example for our children. And so this scripture from Proverbs 20 and seven, it says, the righteous man who walks in integrity and lives life in accord with God, with God's beliefs, how happy, blessed, and spiritually secure are his children who have an example to follow. So when you are living according to the, to the plans of God and to the things of God, your children are happy. Your children are blessed and your children are secure because they have seen your example. They have a, they have a model. They have a guide on what to do. Now, I remember um, growing up, 
my mom, she got saved. She got saved. I'm actually late in age. My mom got saved when I was eight years old. And my mom, she didn't grow up um, in a community where uh, her her parents went to church. So my mom got saved at, at a later age. And when she got saved, she got like saved for real. Um, and so I remember waking up and she would be praying. She would be praying. Um, I remember uh, before she would start praying, she would turn up Joyce Meyer, uh, the televangelist. She would turn up her radio broadcast really loud and she would listen to her while she was in the bathtub. I would still be sleeping. But I remember being a teenager. I was so annoyed. I would be like, oh, my gosh, I wish you would turn this lady down. I don't want to hear preaching. You know, that's just where I was as a teenager. But now (laughs) as an adult, you know, the first thing I do when I get up is I pray. And so when my, when my granddaughter comes, you know, she knows that, you know, Casey is in her prayer room and she's praying and uh, she hears me blasting, guess who, Joyce Meyer or some other televangelist. And so it's really funny, you know, how the Holy Spirit works that our kids, they may seem really disinterested. Our kids might be like, okay, what, whatever. I'm not interested in that. But we as parents, grandparents, we are providing a guide. We are providing an example for our children. And because they are seeing a Holy Ghost template, they will be prosperous. They will be safe. They will be blessed and they will be secure. Our children are watching. And so this is Solomon. He's just given us some wisdom. This is wisdom inspired by the Lord. So I want to encourage you at this moment right now in the name of Jesus. I thank God that God is going to give you bold words to speak into your children that you're going to impart into them. I thank God for the teaching anointing that God has given you that he's placed in your belly and your tongue. Not only will your children see your example of you serving God, going to church, but I thank God that God is going to be able to give you just an anointing of instruction that you will be able to break down and share with your children and your grandchildren, your nieces and your nephews, the other children at church that God gives you influence with, that you'll be able to break down and say, this is why I tithe. This is why I give 10%. This is why I'm sowing a seed um, into our pastor. This is why, you know, um, I don't allow this type of music into our household. This is why I'm asking for you to read a proverb each and every day. That not only will we be able to provide an example for our children, but we will also begin to teach them as well. And so I thank God for just that release. I thank God for the wisdom that he will give you on what to share and what to say with your children. All right, you guys, we're moving right along. We're going through Proverbs chapter 20. We are in, we are on our 20th day of our Proverbs challenge. And I'm just pulling out different scriptures that I felt that the Lord highlighted to me in this chapter during my study time earlier today. All right. The fourth point is your lips of knowledge are so precious. Your lips of knowledge are so precious, so precious. It's so precious. The wisdom and the words of encouragement and the words of blessings and peace that God gives you to speak over his people. Let's look at what the scripture says in Proverbs chapter 20, verse 15. It says, there is gold and abundance of pearls, but the lips of knowledge are a vessel of preciousness, the most precious of all. So there is gold. They're pearls. So we can think of that in kind of like um, modern day times. They're Ferraris. There's trips to Turks and Caicos. There's millions of dollars. But God is saying, you know what? The most precious vessel of all is your knowledge in him. That's what God is saying. And so I just want to encourage you that sometimes it may seem as if people aren't listening. It may seem that people don't value the wisdom, the discernment, the words of advice, the words of counsel that you may give, but God sees it. And he says, you know what? It's precious. It's valuable. And so I just want to encourage you to not shrink back, that there may be some things that God shows you um, to your loved ones, to your children. And you might be like, look, I've already tried to tell them that I'm just going to like be quiet. I'm not going to say anything, but I want to encourage you that as you are led by the Lord to just say, you know, just to say, to share the wisdom, to share the counsel. I think sometimes we can become, um, what's the word? We can become intimidated or even fearful where we are afraid of rejection, but I am learning in this season. And especially as I am led by the Lord, And I understand that being led by the Lord really at the root of that is love. 
that when God highlights a person to me or a young lady, especially, you know, sometimes I will just ask God, God, give me, give me boldness because God put something on my heart, a word of wisdom. And so sometimes I might say, you know what, can I just share something with you from the Lord? Or I might say, you know, can I share some wisdom that I feel that um, God has placed on my heart with you? Can I, can I just share something that's on my heart? And so I kind of open it up that way. And the person can say yes or no. <laughs> and rarely do people be like, no, I don't think anybody's ever told me that they don't want me to share something with them. But I just pray that you will um, value the wisdom and the knowledge that God has given you. Like, obviously, we're here on the Proverbs Challenge. We're asking God for more wisdom. We're asking God for revelation. But because you love Jesus and because you are saved, the Holy Spirit is on the inside of you. So you do have some wisdom. Now, we can get more. We can ask God for greater insight, but you do have a wealth of wisdom on the inside of you because you have the Holy Spirit, which is the spirit of God on the inside. And so there are some people around you at your workplace, um, in your family, in your community that they need your wisdom. They need your wisdom. And so I thank God right now for just the anointing for you to be able to share, for you to be able to impart and for you to be able to release in the name of Jesus. OK, let's look at our fifth part. This one lets us know that sin starts out sweet, but you already know what's going to happen. Right. Y'all know how sin is. It starts off fun. It starts off wild and adventurous. Like, woo, this is good. This is fun. But this proverb is letting us know that, look, sin, it starts out sweet. But you know what? It's going to pull. It's like it pulls the carpet underneath you. And so this is what the proverb says. It says food gained by deceit is sweet. Food gained by deceit is sweet to a man. But afterward, his mouth is filled with gravel. Can you imagine eating like your favorite food? I'll say like fried chicken, even though I don't eat meat anymore. It's still like one of my favorite foods. So can you imagine eating like fried chicken or whatever your favorite food is? And so like you're eating it and you're like, mm, this is so good. And then it turns into gravel. Then it turns into rocks. That's what this scripture is saying that, you know what? Food or not really food, but sin. Sin, um, whatever activity, it starts off sweet, but in the end, it, it just turns into basically a mess. And so it goes on to say, but just as when sin may be sweet at first, but later its consequences bring despair. And so this is just a reminder for us that, you know, sometimes things uh, that we know are wrong, they start off kind of innocuous. They start off innocent. I remember when I first began to take money from my campaign account, which was illegal. Um, really, I was stealing money from a campaign account and using it on personal expenses. It started off really small. Like I didn't just start off like with a, an extravagant expense, but it started off really small. It started off with a cup of hot chocolate that I didn't have any money in my personal account at that time. And so I said, you know what? I'm just going to take money from this account and, you know, I will just pay it back. And it started off really small. But this is letting us know that sin, it starts off small. It starts off sweet. But in the end, there are going to be some dire consequences to pay. So again, you guys, it's just wisdom. It's stuff we already know or that we should know. But this is just a reminder. So when we find ourselves tempted, when we find ourselves tempted to, you know, I don't know, maybe purchase um, something illegal, buying something hot from the back of a car, or you're getting like this great deal um, and you're not sure, you know, where the source of these goods came from, more than likely they're stolen, but you just kind of shrug it off. You know, those are little bitty things that, you know, um, maybe people may not know about, but it's just a reminder for us not to get caught up in that type of stuff. Okay, point number six, go into war. Do you have a big plan? Whatever it is, get counsel first. So we've heard this scripture um, in the past, but this is just a reminder for us in Proverbs 20, verse 18. And it says, plans are established by counsel. So make war with only wise guidance. And so I think about this scripture in the terms of that many of us are in ministry. And uh, God gives us plans. He gives us ideas on how to advance the kingdom of God. 
But what God is saying is, is that, you know, when you're going to war, we're going to war against the enemy. But um, whenever you are moving forward, especially when you know that God is calling you to take territory, God is calling you to do things for his kingdom. He's calling you to expand. OK, we're, we're waging war against the enemy. It's important to get counsel. It's important to ask God for ideas, um, ask God to give you uh, wise counselors, bounce ideas off of different people, just get counsel. Because sometimes we can have blind spots. We can see areas. We, we can't see areas. They're blind to us. And so I mentioned earlier yesterday about how important it is in this season for me to just, you know, like my husband, he's my accountability partner. I'm like, babe, you know, if you see me just doing something that's not right, I may not be able to see it or, you know, just, you know, people can pick up on like different spirits. You see a little pride coming in or even fear coming in or you, you just see see stuff. I need I need you to confront me on it. I need you to point it out to me. OK, and so um, it's just really important for us that whatever we do to get counsel. And if you feel like you don't have counsel, if you feel like you don't really have um, people to give you good advice. Pray it in. Pray it in. Just begin to pray to God. God, send me. Send me people. God, send me leaders. God, send me people. Send me friends. Send me accountability partners. Just begin to pray it in. All right. Point number seven is let God handle them or it. All right. So this is just a great reminder for us that um, whatever issues um, from enemies or whatever, we're going to let we're going to let God deal with it. We're not going to try to get revenge ourselves. So excuse me, this today's scripture, this scripture comes from Proverbs chapter 20, verse 22. And what it says is, do not say I will repay evil. Wait expectantly for the Lord and he will rescue you and he will save you. You know, sometimes we can get really upset with people and be like, OK, I'm going to get you. Your time is going to come. I'm going to wait for you and I'm going to laugh. <laughs> but this scripture is letting us know, like, look, just wait expectantly on God. Let God handle them or let God handle it. I remember um, when I was in politics and one of my opponents, he was just really nasty. Um, I mean, just like really vicious. And uh, I mean, they would like do taunts and all kinds of stuff. And so I mentioned earlier that I had a very public fall from grace, that when I did um, admit that I stole the money, um, had a very public fall on the front page of the newspaper and, um, you know, just a lot of news media about my scandal. That's what I call it. And so there so there was a lot of embarrassment. There was a lot of shame. And y'all know a lot of times when you do fall, that's when your enemies are really ready to look, throw darts at you. They're like, look. They're down. Let's kick them. Let's stick them. You know, all this kind of stuff. And so this opponent um, that I had um, during the election, I, I beat him. And so he was really salty about that. But when I did have my public fall, you know, he really took to social media and really, um, you know, taunted and just did what, you know, enemies do. And uh, I knew not to say anything. Really, I didn't have a, had had the heart to say it because I was really embarrassed my own self and all this kind of stuff. But, you know, God began to just speak to me and say, you know what, Casey, I'm going to handle your enemies. I will handle them. And would you all know that maybe six months later, I was actually in my car driving downtown around the Cleves Landing, which is a tourist area in St. Louis. And there was like nobody there. I mean, it was just like really desolate. And I was like stopped at a stoplight and there was like nobody there. But all of a sudden I saw this man and he was working out and he was um, he was just running and it was just so laborious and I could see this man from a distance and I was like whoever that is this is somebody that hasn't worked out in a long time and they have just said you know what I've gotten out of shape and I've just got to start exercising you all know people like that where you see them and you could tell that they're like new to a workout I mean the Holy Spirit just gave me that I couldn't see them up close but I could just see the person struggling from a distance and as this person uh labored you know while running and y'all know Lacle's landing kind of has heels and all kinds of stuff 
But as he got closer to my car, you know, I could see that this was my former opponent. It was my enemy and my flesh wanted to like honk my heart, my horn, my car horn and kind of laugh at him because he was really struggling. But the Lord said, no, you will not do that. That I'm just showing you this to see um, your enemy, your opponent um, in his most fragile state. And I, I'm showing you him in a very vulnerable way. But um, you are not to make fun. You are not to poke fun at him. I'm just allowing you to see him in this state. And so I just shared this as an example with you that God says, look, I'll repay. I'll, I'll, I'll deal with them. You don't worry about that. And, you know, sometimes God will allow us to see him deal with our enemies and sometimes he won't. But it's just really important. Solomon is just giving us wisdom where he says, look, don't say I'm going to repay evil. Don't say I'm going to get them back. Wait expectantly for the Lord and he will rescue you and he will save you. That's the promise from God. So, again, just a little wisdom that we don't have time to, to worry about them or it. We just trust in God that God will handle our enemies. And look in the New Testament, it's a lot of scriptures on how we deal with our enemies. The Lord says, look, bless those who despitefully use you. The Lord says, vengeance is mine, I will repay. You know, the Lord says, be kind to your enemies. When you do that, it's like you're heaping hot coals upon their heads. That basically what that means is, is they're like, look, I was so mean to this person and now they're so nice to me. I feel kind of shame. I feel kind of guilty about that. That's what that term means. It would be like heaping hot coals on their heads. It, it brings them to repentance. All right, moving on to the next point. All right, we want to think carefully before we make a promise. I have a question for you. Have you ever found yourself telling somebody that, oh yeah, girl, I'll do that. Or yes, I'll serve in this way. Or yes, I'll sow this seed, not a problem, I'll do it. Okay, this scripture, it cautions us to really consider and count the cost before we, in our emotions, just say yes or commit to something. Now, yesterday in Proverbs 19, we learned that zeal without knowledge, it really, it really brings danger. It really is a form of folly, okay? And so this scripture is letting us know in Proverbs 20, verse 25, it says, look, we really want to think carefully before we make a promise. Good to see you. God bless you, Sister Gina, Pastor Gina, Pastor Gina. OK, this scripture, it says it is a trap for a man to speak a vow of consecration, to declare something as holy and not until afterwards considers whether or not he can fulfill it. You guys, I have fallen into this trap before where I have made a pledge or where I have said, you know what, I can do this. And then I have had to backtrack and say, you know, wait, I can't do this. Like, I, I can't. Like, in my emotions, I really wanted to. In my heart, I wanted to. I wanted to be there. I wanted to do it. I wanted to, to give. But the scripture is saying, look, it's not wise to do that. That really what we want to do is consider the cost. We want to count the cost. Um, when I got first got married, I found myself in a situation where as a single, I was like, oh yeah, girl, I'll go to your event. I'll support your event. I'll go here. I'll go there. And like, I was like stressed out. I was trying to care for things at my household and trying to do all of this stuff. But then I had made all these commitments. And my husband is like, Casey, you can't go everywhere. You can't do everything. There must be wisdom. So now in this season, what I do is, you know, when I do receive invitations, you know, just kind of practical. You pray about them and you, you start looking at your schedule. Do I really have time to be able to go here? Do I really have the income to be able to sow on this level? that they are requesting me to. You just got to be practical before we make commitments. So this is just a good reminder for us to consider the cost before we say yes. This is really great practical wisdom. That's the great thing about the book of Proverbs is that, look, this is not any archaic, old timey stuff, but this is just practical wisdom so that we can be successful in our everyday living. All right, you guys, I'm moving on to my final point on this morning. God bless you guys. All right. There is glory 
in the honor, there's glory and honor in the young and in the age. So you guys know that uh, my husband, um, he is, he is 28. There's a 28 year age uh, difference between us. And so I really feel like I have a multi-generational ministry that I really see um, some of his concerns from his perspective. And then there are like some concerns from my perspective. And so I really like this scripture because it's letting us know that there is glory in the youth and physical vigor of those that are young. And then there's some, you know, wisdom and there's some honor in those that are aged, those that have wisdom and those that have seen some things. So we can really coexist as a body, that there really shouldn't be a clash between the millennials and the baby boomers, but we all we all should really be coexisting as one in the body of Christ. And so this scripture lets us know in Proverbs 20 and 29, that the glory of young men is their physical strength and the honor of aged men is their gray hair representing wisdom and experience. So where, wherever you are, on the age scale, you got some glory or you got some honor. There's need of you in the kingdom of God. There's need of you in the kingdom of God. Nobody's being tossed away because they're too young or because they're too seasoned. That uh, there's glory and there is honor. That there are skill sets that can be used to glorify and impact and expand the kingdom of God. And so my prayer is, is that we'll be able to see each other through the eyes of Jesus Christ. That we will be able to see each other, each other's skills and each other's values and contributions in the kingdom of God. I've shared over this broadcast that really before I got married and before God called me to become a pastor of a church that like kids ministry, I was like, oh my gosh, kids at church. I didn't want to sit by them. I did not like when it was their Sunday to sing songs. I would be like, oh my gosh, look, somebody pull them out. Cause you know, kids, they don't know the words and it wouldn't, you know, in my heart and in my flesh, I was just like, I don't want to be near kids. I was like, you know, churches for adults, go, go put them in the corner somewhere to kids ministry. But God really dealt with my heart regarding children. And y'all know the scriptures where Jesus is like, look, suffer not the children, let them come to me. And there's also a scripture where Jesus says, look, I hear the angels, that the angels of these children, they're in my face constantly. And so God really began to, you know, speak to me about the importance and value of children. And so, you know, I just share that as an example, that God has value for everyone. He's not pushing anyone to the side. He's not pushing anyone to the corner, um, that there's honor, there's vigor, there's talent, there are resources in everyone through regardless of their age. OK, so you guys, those are some nuggets that the Lord placed on my heart to just share uh, with you guys today during our Proverbs challenge. I pray that you've been blessed. I do have a couple of announcements that I want to make sure that you know about. Um, so later on today, I will be doing my first um, my first teaching um, in a special Facebook group. It's called More Than Conquerors. And this group is for individuals that desire to have a better relationship with God and food. This is a private Facebook group. Um, but if you feel like God is speaking to you in this season about really getting healthy, um, if you are, if you really, if you know that you have a unhealthy relationship with food, I'm just inviting you to join this Facebook community. Um, you can just type in uh, More Than conquerors on the Facebook search tab and uh, just send a request to join the group and I will allow, I will let you in. Um, it's open, um, but this is just a special group and um, I'm really looking forward to how God is just increasing this ministry to begin talking about um, the issues of food because this is something that is really important um, to the heart of God. So I want to just invite you uh, to join. So I will be doing about a 15 minute live broadcast um, at 1130 a.m. to that group, More Than Conquerors. And our topic today is going to be on what does God say about food, okay? We don't hear a lot of teaching about what God says about food. So I'll be on there for just about 15 minutes. We'll do a little Q&A. And so I just wanna invite you to join me in the uh, More Than Conquerors Facebook group. All right, you guys, this weekend is Dr. Charlize's, her uh her worshipers gathering. It is Friday, uh, September the 21st, and then Saturday, September the 22nd. You can still register 
for this workshop, my recommendation is to type in Scholar Ministries in the Facebook search tab and it will bring you to her page. And from there, you can register. Really looking forward to this event. Also, you still are able to register for Sister Tori's Singles Ministry event, the Clarion Call, on Saturday, September the 29th. You can register through her website at toriboy.com. And um, her uh, website is there on the flyer. So we thank God for Sister Tori connecting with us with this ministry. Also, um, for entrepreneurs, our sister Danielle Davis, she's having her network on wheels September the 29th they'll be leaving from St. Louis to go to Springfield Missouri and um, this trip helps fund educational trips and programs for the youth so again the youth the youth the youth the youth God has need for the youth also just want to remind you that next week we are going to have our first online Bible study we'll be talking about jealousy and competition it's called why her if you've ever asked God God why are you blessing her God, what is it about her? Why you, why, you know, what about me? Hello. If you ever ask God those questions, um, I want to invite you to this online Bible study. So it'll be right here on Facebook on Thursday, September the 27th at seven o'clock. It's open to anybody, um, but we're going to have a great discussion. And I really believe that there's going to be deliverance because we're going to be digging up the roots of jealousy, pride, competition, and comparison. So I invite you to join me here next Thursday at seven o'clock as we pull up these roots of jealousy. All right, you guys, I'm going to close out for today. I hope that you will join me at the More Than Conquerors group if you feel that this is something that God has placed on your heart. Um, I will also be uploading videos from More Than Conquerors to our Facebook, I'm sorry, not to our Facebook page, but to the Yahoo page, to the YouTube page. Y'all help me. It's time for me to get off this thing. Look, this this wrap kind of tight on the head is squeezing the brain. But um, if you miss our More Than Conquerors broadcast, you can also catch it on the YouTube page. All right, you guys, have a good rest of the day. I'll see some of you guys at 11.30 a.m. at the More Than Conquerors Facebook group. All right. Be blessed. Bye.